have been looking at um, two composite systems. By composite systems, I mean a system which is made up of two subsystems. For instance, the oscillator, uh, which had um, a simple harmonic oscillator along the x axis and another along the y axis, if you wish. That total system was a composite system. Yesterday, we looked at the beam splitter. Now, the beam splitter again has two input ports and I feed beams of photons through both the input ports and look at the system as a whole and what happens to the system after it passes through the beam splitter. Today, I wish to look at another composite system, which is two spins, spin 1 and spin 2. But in general, these need not be spins. They could be any form of angular momentum. And therefore, I would be looking at two particles perhaps, which have got angular momenta j 1 and j 2 respectively, 1 and 2 being labels for the particles, particle 1 and particle 2. So, now, today I will be talking about addition of two angular momenta So, there are two systems given by vectors j 1 and j 2. j 1 squared is j 1 dot j 1 and I can find simultaneous eigenstates of j 1 squared and j 1 z. The one here, as I have mentioned earlier, refers to the fact that we are talking about the first system, one of the two systems. So, j 1 squared acting on a state labeled by j 1 m 1 gives me j 1 into j 1 plus 1 h cross squared j 1 m 1 and j 1 z acting on the state j 1 m 1 gives me m 1 h cross j 1 m 1. So, the commuting operators for the first system are j 1 squared and j 1 z and we can have a complete set of eigenstates labeled by j 1 comma m 1 with m 1 taking values minus j 1 to plus j 1 in steps of 1. Similarly, I have the second system and here my notation is going to be the following. I have j 2, the 2 stands for the second system and j 2 squared is j 2 dot j 2. We have already seen that j 2 as also j 1 are vectors under rotations. Once more, I have j 2 squared and j 2 z as the operators which simultaneously commute with each other for the system 2 and I can write the following. There are eigenstates, common eigenstates, a complete set of common eigenstates of j 2 squared and j 2 z and the eigenvalue equation is this. So, here we are. Now, if these two systems, these two spin states, now if I were talking about spins, if you recall, I would use the notation s 1 and s 2 to denote the spin of the first system and the spin of the second system. So, I could talk of two spin multiplets for instance. In general, I would like to refer to them as j 1 and j 2 to show that they could be any kind of angular momentum. That is any kind of generators 
which satisfy the angular momentum algebra. Now, if I were talking about these two systems, 1 and 2, as non interacting systems, clearly it is obvious that the following operators commute with each other j 1 squared j 1 z j 2 squared and j 2 z commute with each other, because clearly operators corresponding to the first system commute with operators corresponding to the second system. And therefore, if I have to describe the two systems as a whole, I would use the following labels j 1 m 1 j 2 m 2. By this shorthand notation, I mean the following. We have come across this kind of a situation earlier when we discussed composite systems. You will recall that in the case of the harmonic oscillator, we had state labels n 1 corresponding to system A and n 2 corresponding to system B. Perhaps you would like to call it n A and n B. In the same sense, here I have the following basis states j 1 m 1 for the first system and j 2 m 2 for the second system. There are two j 1 plus 1 states here, because m 1 can take values minus j 1 2 plus j 1 in steps of 1. There are two j 2 plus 1 states here corresponding to this system. <clears throat> and therefore, the total number of states, the total number of basis states of the two systems taken together, that is as a composite system, the total number of basis states are 2 j 1 plus 1 times 2 j 2 plus 1. Let me give an example. Suppose we were talking about two spin half particles. So, let me call them s 1 is half m 1 can take values half and minus half. Similarly, s 2 is half and m 2 can take values half and minus half. The understanding being this that s 1 squared acting on the state half half, this is little s 1, this is an operator, this is m 1 gives me half times half plus 1 in units of h cross equals 1, half into half plus 1, half half and s 1 z acting on half half is half in units of h cross half comma half. Similarly, for s 2, I have s 2 squared acting on the system 2 state half half gives me half times half plus 1 half half. I could do the following thing. Instead of j 1 and j 2, I have used s 1 and s 2 and therefore, I can make it convenient by denoting this by a and this by b as I did in the case of the harmonic oscillator to show that system 1 has gets denoted by a subscript a and system 2 has states has gets denoted by subscript b s 2 z acting on half half gives me half half half. So, that is the way it is similarly s 1 z acting on half half a gives me half ket half half a s 2 squared acting on half half b is half times half plus 1 half comma half b and so on. The notation must now be evident. System 1 has kets with the subscript a here and system 2 has kets with subscript b. The point is what are the basis states of the coupled system or the composite system? Well, the basis states of the composite system would be the following they would be half half of a 
half half of B, half half corresponding to A with half minus half corresponding to B, half minus half corresponding to A with half comma half corresponding to B and half minus half corresponding to A with half minus half corresponding to B. So, I have four states. System A has 2 J 1 or 2 S 1 plus 1 states, which is 2 states. They are half half A and half minus half A. Similarly, system B has 2 states. And the total is 2 times 2, which is 4 states in total. So, these are the basis states of the two systems taken as a whole and I have given you the four states here. This is merely an example. In general therefore, we have 2 j 1 plus 1 states times 2 j 2 plus 1 states and this is going to be the complete set of basis states for the composite system. I could well work with this set of basis states provided there is no interaction between j 1 and j 2. On the other hand, if there is interaction between j 1 and j 2, then I could land a problem. It might be wiser to talk about the total angular momentum of the system as a whole and the corresponding third component of angular momentum, because the Eigen values, the Eigen states corresponding to the subsystems may not be the relevant basis states here. The Eigen values corresponding to j 1 and j 2 may not be the good labels to use and in fact, they need not be conserved quantities because of the interaction. And therefore, it would be more sensible to look at the composite system in terms of the total angular momentum of the composite system and its third component and anything else it commutes with. Now, if I were to talk of the total angular momentum of the composite system, it is clear that it should behave like any angular momentum. It should behave like a vector under rotations and therefore, like all vectors, the total angular momentum must follow vector addition and I have j equals j 1 plus j 2 and therefore, j squared is j 1 plus j 2 dotted with j 1 plus j 2, but that gives me a cross term because I have 2 j 1 dot j 2. Specifically, uh, I should write j 1 dot j 2 plus j 2 dot j 1 and that is what I have written here as 2 j 1 dot j 2. Remember j 1 and j 2 commute with each other, they are two different systems. Now, suppose I find out the set of operators that commute with j squared. <coughs> it is clear that for corresponding to j squared, I can have j z which will commute with j squared. But j z is the third component of the vector j, is the z component of the vector j and like third components j z simply adds up, j z is j 1 z plus j 2 z. You could think of j as a specific example j z e z and j 1 as j 1 z e z, similarly j 2 as j 2 z e z and it is clear that j z is j 1 z plus j 2 z. That is in a very specific case, but in general like components of a vector j z simply adds up not vectorially, but like scalars would add up. And therefore, the Eigen value for j z if I call that m, m would be equal to m 1 plus m 2, where m 1 and m 2 are given there. So, certainly I can talk about j 
where j times j plus 1 h cross squared is the eigenvalue corresponding to j squared and m the eigenvalue corresponding to j z, j squared and j z having a complete set of common eigenstates and m being equal to m 1 plus m 2. But these are not the only two operators that commute with each other. Look at the following j squared commutator with j 1 z. So, this is the same as j 1 squared plus j 2 squared plus twice j 1 x j 2 x plus j 1 y j 2 y plus j 1 z j 2 z. This is j squared and we wish to find the commutator with j 1 z. j 1 squared certainly commutes with j 1 z they have a complete set of common eigenstates labeled by j 1 m 1. j 2 squared commutes with j 1 z because they are two different systems, but here j 1 x j 1 z do not commute with each other. In fact, they give me j 1 y. Similarly, j 1 y commutator with j 1 z is proportional to j 1 x. The third term of course, commutes. So, in general this is not 0 it is not possible for me to find a complete set of common eigenstates of j squared and j 1 z. But what about j squared and j 1 squared? This is all right, because when I expand j squared in this manner, j 1 squared commutes with itself, j 2 squared and j 1 squared commute, because they are two different systems. And this is j 1 dot j 2, j 1 commutes with j 1 squared and j 2 commutes with j 1 squared. Therefore, this is 0. Similarly, j squared with j 2 squared is 0. So, this is what I have. I have a set of operators j squared, j z, j 1 squared, j 2 squared, all of them commuting with each other. And therefore, if I were talking about the composite system as a whole and I would like to talk in terms of uh, the coupled basis. By coupled basis, I mean when you couple the individual systems perhaps through an interaction and then I look at the basis states relevant to just describe the composite system as a whole. In this case, since these four operators commute with each other. I can label my state as j, m and of course, j 1, j 2. This would be the manner in which I would label the basis states when I look at the coupled basis. If I were looking at the uncoupled basis, that is where the two spins were not interacting with each other then I could well use j 1 m 1 j 2 m 2 and to get this notation nicely, I would like to call this <coughs> j 1 j 2 j m and so that we may be clear in our minds that this is the coupled basis and that is the uncoupled basis. <coughs> I would like to draw this thick compared to that which is just single lines, thin lines like that, uh, but since that would be difficult, I am just indicating it by this notation. This notation, it is simply a notation to show that I am now working with the coupled basis, whereas this was the uncoupled basis. I could work with the coupled basis or the uncoupled basis to describe the composite system, which is the sum of two angular momenta, sum within quotations. How we sum up is a different matter. So, let us look at the values that j and m can take. I now have the following established. because 
we are talking about the coupled states angular momentum and therefore, I pull out j times j plus 1 h cross squared j 1 j 2 j m and j z acting on this state gives me m h cross So, this is what I have except that because these are angular momentum operators m takes values minus j to plus j in steps of 1. So, there are 2 j plus 1 values that m takes and therefore, the total number of basis states for the coupled basis would be 2 j plus 1 except that I have to sum over the minimum value of j min all the way to j max in quantized steps which I have to figure out. So, I need to find out the range of values that j can take corresponding to each value of j m takes 2 j plus 1 values in steps of 1. j max itself can be found in the following manner. I define something called a stretched case. when m takes the values little j or minus j, I call them the stretch case. So, this is the maximum value that m can take for a given j and this is the minimum value that m can take for the same j. Remember that a j multiplet for a given value of j uh, has 2 j plus 1 states with m ranging from minus j to plus j in steps of 1 and therefore, in my example where I have j 1 m 1 and j 2 m 2 as the uncoupled basis states. The maximum value that m 1 can take is j 1 and the maximum value that m 2 can take is j 2. And since j z is j 1 z plus j 2 z, the maximum value that m can take is j 1 plus j 2. If m takes this maximum value clearly j should at least be equal to m and therefore, the maximum value that j takes is j 1 plus j 2. So, in my summation here j max is j 1 plus j 2. As an example, suppose I were combining j 1 equals half with j 2 equals half, j max is 1 and so on. I now have to find j min, but before that I would like to see what is the nature of quantization, what is the next value that j can take in this summation and that can be simply done as follows. Given j 1 m 1 and j 2 m 2, the highest values that m 1 and m 2 can take are j 1 and j 2. The next value could be this because m reduces in steps of 1 and therefore, the value that m can take m is m 1 plus m 2 could be j 1 minus 1 from here with j 2 from there. I could have got it the other way this value could also be j 1 plus j 2 minus 1 from here combining with j 1 from there. Surely, if m takes this value j 1 plus j 2 minus 1 I could think of the stretched case where j is equal to j 1 plus j 2 minus 1 and m equals j. That is one manner that is one way in which m takes values j 1 plus j 2 minus 1. 
but I have two states. I have two ways of combining m1 and m2. I have two different choices which will give me the same value of m and clearly these are two different states. So, while one of them can be accounted for by saying that j is j 1 plus j 2 minus 1 and m as a stretched possibility is also j 1 plus j 2 minus 1. The other one came from here itself. I started with j max equals j 1 plus j 2. So, what are the corresponding states j 1 plus j 2 with j 1 plus j 2. The next state would be j 1 plus j 2 with j 1 plus j 2 minus 1. So, that is one possibility that I start with j 1 plus j 2 being the value of j and m reduces in steps of 1. I have 2 j plus 1 states in this multiplet where j is j 1 plus j 2. The other possibility for m to be j 1 plus j 2 minus 1 is through this. So, the next value of j is j 1 plus j 2 minus 1. I can argue further. In the next stage, I would look at the following m 1 is j 1 minus 2, m 2 is j 2, m 1 is j 1, m 2 is j 2 minus 2. Surely, these are possibilities. Then m is j 1 plus j 2 minus 2. I can also have m 1 equals j 1 minus 1, m 2 equals j 2 minus 1. So, there are three ways in which m takes values j 1 plus j 2 minus 2. Surely, this can come from j equals j 1 plus j 2, m equals j 1 plus j 2 minus 2. It can come from j equals j 1 plus j 2 minus 1, m equals j 1 plus j 2 minus 2. And the third possibility would have arisen from j is j 1 plus j 2 minus 2 and m equals j. That is the same thing j 1 plus j 2 minus 2. So, I have accounted for all the three possibilities and these are three distinct states. I go on in this manner and therefore, I realize that j reduces in steps of 1. So, j starts with j 1 plus j 2 comes down in steps of 1 and those are the possible values of j except that I should now know what is j minimum and that can be easily found out by arguing in the following manner. In the couple basis, I have summation j minimum to j 1 plus j 2. Remember this summation happens in steps of 1 of 2 j plus 1 should be equal to 2 j 1 plus 1 times 2 j 2 plus 1. And then I can work out, I can do the summation and work out what is j minimum. J minimum is modulus of j 1 minus j 2. Instead of doing that, I would illustrate this. <coughs> Again, let us start with j 1 is half, j 2 is half. So, j, uh, the number of states would be 4 because here I have 2 j plus 1, that is 2 states. Similarly, for j 2, I have 2 states. So, 2 j 1 plus 1 times 2 j 2 plus 1 in my example is 4 states. Now, j takes values j 1 plus j 2 to j min. Well, this certainly gives me 3 states j is 1, m is 1 and these are couple states j is 1, m is 0 and j is 1, m is minus 1. That is 3 states the minimum value is modulus of j 1 minus j 2 which is 0. That gives me one more state j is 0 and therefore, m is 0. So, these are 4 states in the coupled basis and I have 4 states in the uncoupled basis. So, I find that the number of states match and that is the way it ought to be quite independent of the kind of basis states that we select. They should form a complete set. 
not only that, the number of basis states must be the same in various choices that we make for the basis states. So, let me illustrate this with some more examples. J 1 is 1, J 2 is half. Uh, recall from whatever was done earlier on spin systems that um, the value that j can take in that case you would have called it s the values would be either integer or half integer positive values in units of h cross. So, I have j 1 is 1 and j 2 is half. So, j takes values 1 plus half to 1 minus half modulus of 1 minus half in steps of 1. What are the number of states in the uncoupled basis? I have states 2 j plus 1 states here, which is 3 states here, and that is 2 states there. So, I have 6 basis states. Example 1 1 with half half or 1 0 with half minus half and so on. This is j 1, this is m 1, this is j 2 and that is m 2. I should account for 6 states here and that is true there are 2 j plus 1 states. <coughs> so, that is for each j there are 2 j plus 1 states and for each j value these are the m values. So, that is 4 states corresponding to j equals 3 by 2, 3 halves and m takes values 3 halves half minus half and minus 3 halves. So, this is the case j comma minus j, that is the case j comma j and m comes down in steps of 1. Then I have j equals half, so that gives me the other 2 states half half and half minus half thus accounting for 6 states. So, j reduces from j 1 plus j 2 to modulus of j 1 minus j 2 in steps of 1, which is what we have got here and we have accounted for the basis states. Now, we are in a position to look at uh, addition of angular momenta. The problem simply reduces to this how do you express a coupled state or, or a state expressed in the coupled basis in terms of the uncoupled basis. In other words, how do you express 3 halves, 3 halves for instance in terms of combinations like this or how do you express 3 halves minus half in terms of appropriate basis states there and that is all that we look at in the context of addition of angular momenta. So, let me look at a simple example combining two spin doublets j 1 is half, j 2 is half. So, j is 1 or 0 and therefore, the couple basis states are 1 comma 1, this is j, this is m. Of course, I should write j 1, j 2, j m. So, let us do that half for j 1, half for j 2, j is 1, m is 1. So, this is j 1, j 2, j m. Then of course, I have half, half, 1 0, half, half, 1 minus 1. half half 0 0. To begin with there were 4 states because it is 2 j 1 plus 1 times 2 j 2 plus 1. Now, I have 2 j plus 1 states corresponding to j is 1 and 2 j plus 1 states corresponding to j is 2. So, this is what I have. I would like to shorten the notation further and not 
write down j 1 and j 2 at all. So, this is simply identical to 1 1, this is identical to 1 0, this is identical to 1 minus 1 and this is identical to 0 0. This is a notation, it is a convenient notation. I would like to suppress the indices j 1 and the labels j 1 and j 2 and just keep j and m to represent the coupled basis states. For the uncoupled basis states in this problem, I have j 1 is half, j 2 is half that is j 1 or j 1 m 1, j 2 m 2. So, that is half half with half half. Then of course, I can have half half with half minus half and then I have half minus half with half half and I have half minus half with half minus half. Again, I would like to shorten my notation and simply use m 1 and m 2 remembering j 1 and j 2 at the back of my mind, just keeping them in my mind. So, I would like to write this state as half half, this as half minus half, this as minus half half and this as minus half minus half and these are the uncoupled basis states. So, by way of a shorthand notation, I represent the uncoupled basis set using the labels m 1 and m 2. I should have written j 1 m 1, j 2 m 2, but I am just trying to save um, some time and write a compact notation for this. So, I write m 1 and m 2. Similarly, for the coupled basis states, I should have written j 1, j 2, j m but once more I just remember j 1 and j 2 at the back of my mind and I keep the labels as j and m. The question that is to be addressed is how do you write the coupled basis states in terms of the uncoupled basis states. If I were talking about spin, I would talk of the spin triplet when I talk about these because s is equal to 1, s z is 1 or m equals 1 s is 1, m is 0 and s is 1, m is minus 1 and I talk of this as the singlet state of spin because there is exactly one basis state there. So, now let me look at the state 1 0. Well, instead of writing this as 1 0, I could have written this in terms of the uncoupled basis. <coughs> I would have gotten m equals 0, this is j, this is m. I would have gotten m equals 0 only by using m 1 is half and m 2 is minus half. So, this would have come from m 1 is half, m 2 is minus half, but it could also have come from m 1 is minus half and m 2 is half. So, it should be a superposition. There is no other way I could have used m 1 and m 2 given the values of m 1 and m 2. There is no other way I could have produced m equals m 1 plus m 2. <coughs> except to combine half with minus half and minus half with half. These are distinct states and therefore, there is a superposition of these two states to give me 1 0. Suppose, I want to find out this coefficient. It is clear that if I did this, that means, take the inner product of half minus half with 1 0 that should give me the following.
but these are orthogonal states they have different quantum numbers two states are orthogonal are distinct states if at least one label is different between the two states and uh, here the m1 labels are different whereas this is 1 because I have normalized all states to 1 that is the assumption and therefore, A is simply this object. Similarly, B is minus half half 1 0 this inner product is B. Well, this state is a superposition of two of the uncoupled basis states and we have a way of finding out as always we use the same method to find out the coefficients a and b. And since these are normalized states and this state 2 is normalized to 1, this implies that in general a and b can be complex numbers and therefore, mod a squared plus mod b squared equals 1. The interpretation is very clear. If you expand the coupled basis state 1 comma 0 in terms of the uncoupled basis states half comma minus half and minus half comma half. The coefficients appearing here a and b when mod squares and added should give me 1 because after all this state has to be expanded completely in terms of these and therefore, the total uh, probability of it being expanded in terms of these states should be 1. A and B are referred to as Klebsch Gordon coefficients or the CG coefficients for short and they satisfy the following uh, relation. Now, suppose we look at the state 1 1 that is the state out here 1 comma 1. Let me repeat this. So, 1 comma 1 is to be expanded in terms of the uncoupled basis states. The only way by which I could have got m equals 1 is by using m 1 equals 1 and m 2 equals m 1 equals half and m 2 equals half. There is no other possibility. I should have had a half plus half to give me 1 because this gives me 0 that gives me 0 and minus half minus half this minus 1. So, when I write 1 comma 1 in terms of half comma half there is exactly one basis state appearing here and the coefficient is 1. This is called a stretched case, stretched case because m equals j, m 1 equals j 1, m 2 equals j 2. I would say the same thing for 1 comma minus 1 because that could have come only from m 1 equals minus half and m 2 equals minus half and that is also a stretched case. So, stretched case is this or m equals minus j m 1 equals minus j 1 m 2 equals minus j 2. When we discuss a stretched case there is exactly one C g coefficient and that is 1 that is simply unity. So, looked at from the coupled basis framework the basis state is 1 comma minus 1 in the uncoupled basis it simply translates to minus half comma minus half. Again I emphasize that by this object by 1 comma 1 I mean j 1 is half j 2 is half j is 1 and m is 1 there by half comma half I mean j 1 is half m 1 is half j 2 is half m 2 is half. So, whenever m is equal to j or minus j corresponding to which m 1 is plus j 1 or minus j 1 and m 2 is plus j 2 or minus j 2 it is called a stretch case. So, in this problem I can now write the following I have 1 comma 1 is half comma half here this is m 1 m 2 and this is j m 1 comma 0 is a times minus half comma half plus b times half comma minus half 
and 1 comma minus 1 is half minus half comma minus half. These are the stretched cases. We have to find out a and b. Then there is a singlet state which is 0 comma 0. Again if m is equal to 0 clearly it could have come from m 1 is minus half and m 2 is half. It could also have come from m 1 is plus half m 2 is minus half except that this state is distinctly different from this. They are orthogonal to each other and therefore, they are two different coefficients there c and d except that mod c squared plus mod d squared is 1 the same way as mod a squared plus mod b squared equals 1. So, the problem now reduces to finding out to estimating uh, the values of to determine values of a, b, c and d given these conditions and given the fact that these states are normalized to 1 and they are orthogonal to each other. The manner in which this is done is straightforward. We know the action of j minus and j plus the raising and lowering operators on the angular momentum states. j minus is j 1 minus plus j 2 minus. j minus is the operator acting on the coupled basis j 1 minus on system 1 and j 2 minus on system 2. It is clear and similarly j plus is j 1 plus plus j 2 plus. So, let us let us write this better j plus is j 1 plus plus j 2 plus. The effect is as follows j plus acting on the state j m is root of j minus m into j plus m plus 1. I have set h cross equals 1 in all these problems and I have j m plus 1. I am using double braces because these are coupled states and j minus acting on j m gives me j plus m j minus m plus 1 j comma m minus 1. j 1 minus acting on the state j 1 m 1 does the same thing it is j 1 or let us start with j 1 plus it is j 1 minus m 1 times j 1 plus m 1 plus 1 j 1 m 1 plus 1 j 1 minus acting on the state j 1 m 1 is j 1 plus m 1 times j 1 minus m 1 plus 1 with a minus sign. <coughs> so, this is the way they act similarly j 2 j 2 acts on the state the operator j 2 plus acts on the state little j 2 comma m 2 and so on. So, given this I can now do the following if I used j minus on the state 1 1 apart from the coefficients put down there I should get the state 1 0 that amounts to doing j 1 minus plus j 2 minus on the state half half j 1 minus of course acts only on j 1 comma m 1 j 2 minus acts on j 2 comma m 2 and so on and this is how I would be able to estimate uh, get the values of a and b. So, let me do that now. So, let us start with 1 comma 1 j minus acting on 1 comma 1 is root of j plus m <coughs> times j minus m plus 1 which is just root 2 1 comma 0 and j 1 minus plus j 2 minus acting on half comma half this state is to be understood as j 1 is half m 1 is half j 2 is half m 2 is half this object is simply going to be j 1 acts on this giving me root of j plus m to j minus m plus 1 
and does nothing to the other state plus j 2 minus acts on j 2 m 2 this is j 2 that is m 2 this is j 1 that is m 1 leaving this state alone untouched and pulls out a j 2 plus m 2 times j 2 minus m 2 plus 1 except that it lowers the m 2 value. So, in the first case the m 2 became minus half the m 1 became minus half and the m 2 continued to be half. In the second case the m 1 continues to be half and the m 2 becomes minus half and therefore, I have 1 0 is 1 by root 2 times half minus half 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 plus 1 by root 2 half 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 minus half. In other words I can now fill up this column I will have the following one one is half half one zero is one by root two times half 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 mi minus half half plus half minus half and one minus one is a stretch case anyway that is just minus half minus half. So, I have got a and b and it is clear that a squared plus b squared each of them being 1 by root 2 a squared plus b squared is 1. 0 0 is orthogonal to 1 0 and this together with the fact that c squared plus d squared equals 1 without loss of generality I am choosing c and d to be real values otherwise I would have done mod c squared plus mod d squared. I can choose them to be real because there is a phase and I am only concerned with the, the squares their addition to be 1 and this together with c squared plus d squared equals 1 since I know a and b would give me that c is plus or minus 1 by root 2 and correspondingly d is minus or plus 1 by root 2. Either of them is correct I have to choose a convention, but as it happens I can write 0 0 as 1 by root 2 times minus half half minus 1 by root 2 times half minus half uh, 1 by root 2 half minus half or the other way around either is right. A convention has to be used and a certain convention once decided upon must be used throughout the problem. In this case we do not have any issues uh, on this matter we can use c to be plus or minus 1 by root 2 and d correspondingly to be minus or plus 1 by root 2. Therefore, I have got the c g coefficients for both the triplet state and the singlet state.